um, whenever you make blanket statements, like women are responsible for the men that they choose. I think I, I do think that some of the things that you said um, could be described as victim blame. And in a lot of cases, whenever you get into a relationship, like my own marriage, um, people aren't abusive whenever you go into it. It starts over time with little corrections, things like that. And I think it's pretty horrendous, um, you know, especially in a severe abuse case to suggest that the woman is responsible. You're going to dispute that women are 5 million percent responsible to whether or not they date a man. No, what I said was that there are cases when women get married that the man that they're dating because obviously everybody is fierce and straight um, that doesn't present the properties that become problematic later. And the example that I gave was abuse. He starts hitting me. Are you suggesting that I'm at fault because I picked him? Neither no. one of us can get a listen. Neither one of us can get around my statement that it's factual. You made a generalized statement that women are responsible for the men that they choose. So that's is that a fact or not? Is that a fact or not? Let, we're not gonna get past that. Is that a fact or not? <laughs> no, it depends. Shut. Did I say no. So when my boyfriend agreed to babysit my son while I went to Atlanta on a girl's trip, he flew to Cabo and left my son at, at another woman's house. She texted me that she had my son and I had to cash app her $300 for babysitting. Also, she's pregnant by him. I need revenge ideas. No, you need to go get your son. That's what you need to do. I got receipts to back up everything I say. My daughter mama is an awful bitch. Like, I don't be around her. I stopped being around her when my daughter was probably around about in, probably about, I don't know, my daughter was probably about fourth grade when I just said I'd never talk to that bitch again. Because she wasn't nothing but drama, and everybody act like drama is something that you're supposed to forgive from a bitch. I don't Anyone. forgive drama from no bitch. Real quick. So what are we looking at? We'll go to the message. Go to the message. Tell your boyfriend. Actually, tell your boyfriend number. Tell his number or his name and see if they got, is number seven your phone? No, it's not nope. saving my All right, type the number in and see if it's saved. Hold on, type it in real quick. Wait, the number's saving your phone. It's not, let me see. Wait, it's saved right there. Oh. The number's saving your phone. Yeah, I had a caller one time and her you, phone died. But why you saved the number though? You remember that time I had calls? Yeah, yeah. Why, why you, uh, but why you saved the number though? That's kind of a red flag for me, but no, it's cool. No, we could, it's we could call, call him in. Uh, wait, no, let her call him and act like you're not here. Okay, okay. Call him and act like you're not here. Let me see something. Hello? You want an FX and chill tonight? Damn, I ain't gonna lie. If you're gonna do this, it's gonna be the last time because oh. I think we're gonna keep doing this. Oh. All right, we can't keep doing this. We keep doing this. You're gonna get caught up. I know oh. you're motherfucking lying. Wait, what is he talking I know you mother. You've been FX. You've been fing my friend. Oh, I know you're mother lying. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I know you're mother lying. I'm saying that. Y'all can't fight though. Y'all can't be fighting though. Hold on, hold on. What are you talking about? You said Netflix. And but you just said you never talked to him what before. What are you, you talking just said, about? I mean, you just. Oh, you nigga. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You're a hoochie nigga. You're a hoochie nigga. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I mean, you be going on. Let's be real. Let's be real. All the times you out on vacation, you never nobody. I'm loyal to my nigga. I'm not on vacation. You're not fucking my nigga. I'm working. I'm not working. I'm not working. What about that one time you were denied that money? That one time you Hold on, 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 talk and potty train how to convince her to give us a break for a few years i need you to be you fucking for real, real sir look the million dollar question of today is do you support your girl having a guy best friend hell no no we was just talking about this last week too oh, because real? she has a guy best friend okay uh, he, and i don't mess with he's literally gay no he's looking for his opportunity you don't see that that's how guys bro you know how i know i know, are, I know how guys are no, i respect, he's, that. I respect he's, that if i call him right now you could hear that he's gay okay so he's like okay i'll call him 
How about this? You don't trust him? She gonna call him right now? Just be like, he cheated on you. Okay. Bro, no, I don't trust it. Bro, I don't what? trust him. I don't know. Babe, no, you, know you don't trust. No, I don't know. I don't trust me. That doesn't make sense. Guys are different. Watch. I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> What's up? He cheated on me. See, yeah, I knew he wouldn't. Know. It's cool. Don't even worry about it. Well, yeah, let me come pull up on you and hit it like we used to to get your mind off. Hit it like we oh used God. to? Bro, I knew. Bro. See, that's why we shouldn't have done this, bro. I knew. I had a three-man tingle with a co-worker and his girl that went wrong after he finished with me. His girl tried to fight me, so I went home and went straight to bed. My husband woke me up because I stunk up. Bang, bang. And had another man's drawers. He's not speaking to me. Advice? I wouldn't speak to you either, sis. You didn't even try to hide the fact that you were cheating. You didn't take a shower. You had another man's drawers on. Engages in sexual intercourse no more than two times every seven days. These are just suggestions now for a universal man okay. and universal woman. And use a minimum of time and materials in regards to such engagement. Now, why twice every seven days sexual intercourse? Because if you're a universal man and universal woman, you're supposed to be busy doing a lot of constructive things. So this sort of just uh, puts in sort of a time capsule, you might say. It can be any time, and you do as much of it as you please. I mean, to satisfy yourself, it's not curtailing anything, but you kind of orchestrate it in such a manner that you have other things to do. That's the main thing. You don't spend all your time in bed having sexual intercourse or looking forward to just having sexual intercourse and never doing anything else of constructive value. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to have nine areas of activity that's got to be covered. Economics, education. You're supposed to be learning something, studying something. But if you're spending all your time having sexual intercourse, all you're learning is more different ways of having sexual intercourse. And so this, this is just a guideline. Okay. For the, you know. Now on page and so you have quite a few there, right? And, and like I said, the whole, all of the characteristics of a universal man and a universal woman are yet to be yet to evolve. Yes, I mean you know, but everything will be of constructive value. That will be the characteristic. Mm. So you know, I would like to see it now, and I think everybody should like to see it. Everybody of correct mind. I mean, when you 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 say. I can I can tell by the way this person is talking. I can see by the, all the things this person does. This is a universal man. This is a universal woman. Nobody even had to tell me. They have all of the characteristics of universal man and universal woman. Mm -hmm. And and people who are not universal man and universal woman, they should aspire to be that. It'll be a criteria that will fit anybody who goes down that road and say, hey. I'm going to be a universal man, a universal woman. That's my goal, yep. which is all the more reason why everybody should strive to be universal man and universal woman. And this is just a short list. We want a complete list before you actually arrive and say, hey, I am officially, officially a universal man. Or if it's a female, I am officially a universal woman. I meet all of the requirements okay. of that. And oh. you do it on your own. Yeah. Nobody dictates to you. Okay. You, you you head toward that goal. Meaning what? The most constructive organism in the universe. I mean, that's what uh, these you, that universal man, universal woman concept is all about. Okay. I mean, you, you, you function in a constructive manner in every move that you make. All not right. just in some. People who engage in sexual intercourse and or serious sexual play with each other should never, and I repeat, should never be strangers to one another. Each person should know as much about each other person as he or she knows about himself or her sir, herself and maybe more. And I'm talking to myself in this one. The explanation is the words I don't know are words spoken too many times in regards to the sexual arrangements that involve non-white people, particularly with each other. I didn't know you were married. I didn't know you had other children. I didn't know you were in prison before. 
I didn't know you didn't have a job. I wish I knew blank, blank, blank. I wish if I had a known blank, 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 blank. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And that leads to name calling, cursing, crying, threats, assaults, killing, all this other crazy stuff, slashing ties. He's trying to expose people on social media. All this crazy stuff that's happening because we do we we did not take the time to get to know each other as much as possible on a great level before we engaged in sexual intercourse. And the suggestion Neely Fuller is getting is giving. You all should have conversations in front of you, or we all, we should have conversations in front of each other, male and female, have conversations in front of each other, naked. We're both naked, and we are not complimenting each other on our bodies. We're not talking about the bodies, and we're not touching the bodies. And we're going to have full-on, honest conversations and ask the tough questions, ask the vulnerable questions ask the questions that go cut deep that may trigger stuff we're going to ask all the important questions and neither fuller suggesting to do this at least at least 200 times before you engage in sexual intercourse because that will ensure that you have done your due diligence in getting to know this person according to compensatory counter racist logic interactions like this should never happen in sexual mateship that involve a non-white person everything that is <clears throat> everything that is possible to be known should be known before the first act of intercourse or serious sexual play no thoroughly nothing hidden no surprises no disappointments coming out of expectation absolutely no secrets of any kind the result should be less misunderstandings less conflict no jealousy more trust no unpleasant surprises, more constructive interactions, no deception, and no hypocrisy. And you can see from the clips, the, vi the, the clips in the beginning of the video, all unconstructive interactions, mainly, and in people explaining that they didn't know the person that they were dealing with, whether it's a friendship or a relationship or whatever. They didn't truly know the people that they were dealing with. No disappointments based on expectations and no more pain filled expressions of I don't know. Many conflicts and much confusion has proven to be the result of people not knowing enough about his or her chosen mate before the first act of sexual intercourse or sexual play. Everything, everything worth knowing should be known by everyone involved in advance of the first time or the first hint of sexual intercourse. Know and understand that the words I don't know should not be a part of any sexual mateship that involves a non-white person. Never, ever, and never, therefore, be for the first act of sexual intercourse and or sexual play with any person for the first time with that person. Try to get that person to agree that both of you will ask and answer any questions that you will likely ever ask each other. The questions and answers must be truthful and voluntary. There should be no question that should not be asked or answered. The answer may be may in fact be, I don't know. If that is the truthful answer, it must be accepted as such. If it's the truthful answer. The answer to another question may be, I can't answer that question without gossiping about other people. And I cannot do that. That too is the correct way to answer the question. And it is acceptable because gossiping is not constructive. All questions and answers must be acceptable for the persons involved. Truth is an absolute necessity. Anything said that is not true must end any possibility of any and any future sexual intercourse and or sexual play between the persons involved. This is not only this not only applies to the first act, but any subsequent acts of sexual intercourse. If any deception or misconceptions, or lies, anything comes out, especially after we sat down for 200 conversations and you're still holding stuff and you still got lies you're not constructive you you not a a a a person that i should be around because we're only surrounding ourselves with the people who who put in the work to be the best versions of themselves there should be no limit to the total number of questions asked and answered there must be an agreement that any questions not answered or any questions not asked must not, must not be asked again after the first act of sexual intercourse or sexual play. So we're going to get it all out before we have sex. 
And if we get it all out before we have sex, that improves our chances of having a healthy and sexual relationship. Because by the 200th conversation, I have a very good idea of who I'm dealing with, especially because we're going to ask the questions that go down the rabbit hole. I'm going to ask the tough questions. We're going to we're going to get to know each other. Then I'm going to be ready to answer them. So welcome, welcome, happy Monday. Welcome back to On the Shoulders of Giants as we continue our reading and review of Neely Fuller's landmark book, The United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept, a compensatory counter-racist code, a textbook works workbook for thought, speech, and or action for victims of racism, white supremacy. And there's a link to get the book in my description of the video and also a link to the Victims of White Supremacy YouTube channel that... Um, I get some of the clips and things from so make sure you go uh also because the the book the link to get the book is neely fuller's website producejustice.com so make sure you go check out the website support neely fuller on producejustice.com get your copy of the book from producejustice.com all right we still talk about sex we're still talking about sex sex is one of the nine areas of human activity and according to compensatory logic sex is the most powerful force in our in our existence in our universe but and especially in our country in our nation behind white supremacy behind white supremacy sex drives people to do all types of stuff and in this section we're talking about why people should ask the tough questions why people should have real conversations real adult conversations before they have sex the way we have sex is trashy tacky and terroristic it's unproductive is it needs to be thrown away start over again that's before i before i read the part in the book where he started talking about trashy tacky and terroristic i used to say we just need to start up we need to throw the way we have sex and with the way we have sex we need to throw it away and start over because it's not working for us and i get it i'd be horny too i'm just like the rest of y'all i like to have sex i'd be horny too but i understand that what we're doing is unproductive and unconstructive. So we need to throw it away and start off. But let's jump back in it, right? And make sure you subscribe, comment, like, all that. And make sure if you comment, it's okay to disagree. Because we've seen that in the, in, a, in the video for, for the Dr. Umar video. It's okay to disagree. We welcome disagreement. But it's not okay to disagree disrespectfully with insults and stuff. So... Those of you who disagree and have to sling insults and have to have to try to talk down, you you are showing your lack of intelligence and your lack of maturity. It's okay to disagree. We don't have to agree on everything, but don't be rude and don't be insulting. Grow the hell up. All right. A very important part of your code should and must be that the very first time that your chosen mate inflicts bodily harm upon you must be the very last time that you allow yourself to be in contact with that with that person read that again a very important part of your code your individual code according to neely fuller is should and a, a, a part of your code should it must be that the very first time that your chosen may inflicts bodily harm upon you must be the very last time that you have contact with that person First time, last time. No contact after the first time, either directly or indirectly. No talking, no message sending, ever, ever, and never. Make this known to your chosen mate long before there is any sign of the very first argument, disagreement, satisfaction, disappointment, or the slightest discontent. Make it known that there will be no second guessing and no second chances. And um, just to make sure you know, I am reading from pages... For this video, read reading from pages 308 to 336. So that's what I'm reading, 308 to 336. And I'm at the bottom of uh, page 309. That's where I'm reading this. First time, last time, absolutely. It is over, fi finished, complete, fixed, no contact, no conflict. This part of the compensatory counter racist code should apply everywhere at all times and forever. Keep your hands to yourself. If this is a healthy relationship that we should be building you should have you should have your emotions under control notice he didn't put a gender on that you notice you notice he didn't put a gender or a sex on that whatever y'all want to call it he didn't say 
only men should keep their hands to themselves or only women. He said nobody at all times. So that means accountability on both sides. Keep your hands to yourself. And if you are not at a point where you believe you can keep your hands to yourself, you need to be alone. And if you are encountering a person that can't keep their hands to themselves, get the hell away from them as far away as you can. Before engaging in sexual intercourse with someone that you have never engaged in sexual intercourse with, make sure that you do all of the following. And he is suggesting that we, one, make certain that the person is non-white. And there's more explanation on why you shouldn't be having sex with white people, why, or why you should be having sex with non-white people and you should not be having sex with white people doing the system of white supremacy. Neela Fuller is going to explain his theory on that. Two, mutually agree that the female partner is ready, willing, and able to provide all necessary care and support for any offspring that is produced and that the care and support is provided with minimum help from any other person. So get you a woman for men. If you're going to get a woman pregnant, make sure it's a woman who can take care of herself and a child if the child is produced out of the sexual interactions. Don't get a woman pregnant that can't take care of herself and a child. It's unproductive. Mutually agree to tell each other everything that you like, everything that you dislike, and everything that you have done, plan to do in regards to every area of activity. Mutually agree to meet each other along with the two of you being in full and consent and constant view of each other completely naked while also talking about ways and means of ending white supremacy and producing justice and do this no less than 200 days and nights. Put the work in to get to know each other, like to really, really build a real foundation for your relationship. Like that's that's one of the most powerful things we can do is not rush this thing. But in the meantime of getting to know each other, like actually get to know each other, like have real conversations, but be vulnerable with each other. But also we have to be each party has to be adult and mature enough to handle the vulnerability of the other person. You can't ask me to be open. And then when I'm open with you, you scold me or you stigmatize me for being open. Yes, as a man, I do have emotions. And yes, I do have feelings. And hey, if we touch a nerve, we touch a nerve. But that's the point of all of this, to learn each other. I, too, am a human being. Mutually agree to tell each other everything about any acts of sexual intercourse, sexual play, and or anti-sexual activity that you have engaged in, including the names, the titles of any white persons involved and all information pertaining to the time, place, circumstances, and the reasons for such involvement. So tell me everything. Who you had sex with, why you had sex with them, where you had sex with them. Did you use a condom? Was you on top? Was you on the bottom? Did y'all pee on each other? Did you spit in each other's mouths? Did you put it in your butt? Did you eat butt? Did you no, did you ever had you ever been semenized in your face? All those different things. Questions have to be asked because I need to know what I'm getting into. Now, the dead prayers that that's on mind sex. Let's talk about mind sex. We ain't got to take our clothes off yet. Basically, the whole thing was I need to know what I'm getting into. Let's have mind sex. Mutually agree that any act of sexual intercourse and or sexual play between either of you with another non-white person will at no time henceforth be a reason for any harmful conflict between yourselves and and or any other non-white person. So basically what he's getting at is, and I'm jumping ahead, but I'm going ahead to say it now. Because of the system of white supremacy and because of such confusion, uh, tacky behavior, trashy behavior, terroristic behavior, and we are operating as children within the system of white supremacy you have to expect children to be childish and you have to expect that hey something bad can happen and your mate might have sex with somebody else that's not saying that's not guaranteeing that your mate will and that's not increasing the probability of your partner doing that but it's saying that under the system of white supremacy why would you expect sanity Expect insanity at all times under the system of white supremacy, but you two have to have a code of conduct that you follow for each other and parameters that you have for each other. But to expect insane people in insane conditions to give you same results is in turn insane. Do not produce offspring until you can adequately feed, clothe, and shelter them 
with very little help from others and until you are ready, willing and able to teach them in great detail about racism, what it is and how it works in all of the areas of activity. Because I, I know a lot of people, I'm not ready to talk to my child about racism. Well, shit, you had a damn black child in the system of white supremacy and you don't want to teach them about it. You want them to just figure it out. You can teach them about it, you can prepare them, but you just want them to figure it out because you're not ready to talk to your child about racism, but yet you had a black child in the system of racism, white supremacy. Guess what? You are obligated to prepare your child to deal with the system of white supremacy. Do not produce offspring until you can add. Oh, I read that. For the females, do not expect any non-white male to be of much help to you in solving any problems that you may have, particularly to provide you with adequate food, clothing, shelter, or provide you and your offspring with protection from protection and harm. The explanation is, as long as white supremacy exists, non-white males are allowed to do with, for non-white females, only what the white supremacists, men and women, permit them to do. So basically, under the system of white supremacy, expect black men, expect black males to not be able to assume the position of black men. Expect black males to become up short. Expect black males to be inadequate. Expect black males to not be able to put forth the effort to truly make things better. That's an expectation because of the system of white supremacy. Now, that doesn't mean that black males cannot be productive. That doesn't mean that black males cannot be constructive. That doesn't mean that black males cannot and should not be working to produce justice. That's not what that means. But what it does mean is the same thing I said earlier. If we are if we've become insane under the system of white supremacy, why would you expect sanity? So, yes, black men have been coming up short and black men keep coming up short. Yes. Yes. they. Yes. Black men keep coming up short. Yes, they've been coming up short. But that doesn't mean that all black men are to be thrown away or that all black men are inadequate. What that means is just expect more of black men to come up short because we're under the system of white supremacy, just like expect, expect black women to come up short. Black men and black women, we should expect each other to be able to come up short under the system of white supremacy because we are the victims of the system of white supremacy and it's designed to make us come up short. We were created to come up short. Niggas were made to be destructive. That's what he's getting at. But that doesn't mean we can't fix our situation. But what that does mean is we have a reason for why we're in this situation. It's a reason, not an excuse. It's a difference between reasons and excuses. The excuses happen when people don't want to get up off their ass and work to make things better. All right. We're choosing to respond to general questions about your sexual activity, say, while existing within the system of white supremacy, my sexual activities have always been pitiful, primitive, stupid, silly, tacky, and or trash, trashy. And yes, mine have very, 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 very unproductive. I'd be horny, but I'd be, but it'd be unproductive. So change. Though that means Joseph, you have to change. You have to, you have to be able to control yourself and go, work toward having more constructive sexual activity and in partnering with constructive black women who are constantly working to end the system of white supremacy, not talking about it, not looking like they're doing it, but are actively working and constructively working to end the system of white supremacy. Um, here's an explanation. Within the system of white supremacy and because of the conflict and confusion that racist men and racist women produce among non-white people, all of the sexual activities that involve non-white people can collect can collectively be described as pitiful, primitive, silly, stupid, tacky, and or trashy if any of your sexual activities have included making people extremely fearful of you or extremely fearful of them. Be willing to say that your sexual activities include behavior that was terroristic. All right. So here's a question. Does any does every person in the known universe have a so-called serious sex problem? And the answer, according to Neely Fuller, Neely Fuller says yes. During the existence of the system of white supremacy, all sexual activity between people produces problems because 
it's designed to continue the system of white supremacy. It's not designed to produce justice. So the, op the opposite of producing justice is producing problems. Every person in the, young, in the known universe is at all times either engaging in sexual intercourse and or sexual play, or he or she is directly or indirectly reacting to those who are engaged. Either way, all such actions and reactions produce serious problems in one form or another. In addition, all of these problems collectively help to make the problem of replacing the system of white supremacy with the system of justice extremely difficult. Because we got sex problems. Because we were taught to have unproductive, unconstructive sex. We were taught to go after lust and orgasms and ejaculations and vaginal skeets. That's what we all train to go after. Sex, sex, orgasm, busting off nuts. Sex, orgasm, and busting off nuts everywhere. Not thinking about how could sex help us to produce justice? How could sex help us? How could we use sex to help us get closer to ending the system of white supremacy? That's a whole nother mindset. What is the only legal reasons for a non-white for a non-white male and a non-white female to engage in sexual intercourse and or sexual play during the existence of white supremacy? Let me read that again. What is the only logical reasons? Because I did say legal. So what is the only logical reasons for a non-white male and a non-white female to engage in sexual intercourse and or sexual play during the existence of white supremacy and racism? The answer is to help promote more powerful thought, speech, action, and that and designed to replace the system of white supremacy with the system of justice. That's it. If you're not doing that, what are we doing? Wasting our time and being more unconstructive and helping to continue the system of white supremacy. Do not choose as a sexual as a sexual mate or spouse, etc. Any person whom you would not continue to want as a mate, a spouse, etc. If that person willfully and deliberately continues to engage in sexual intercourse and or sexual play with others after agreeing to be your mate or spouse. Don't agree to marry somebody. What he's saying is don't agree to marry somebody who you would not want to be with them after you learned they had sex with somebody else, especially, well, they had sex with some other non-white person. The explanation is according to compensatory counter racist logic, so-called dedication to one non-white person in manners of sexual intercourse and or sexual play should not be a so-called requirement for those non-white people who do not allow such sexual intercourse and or sexual play to hinder their thoughts, speech, and action against the system of white supremacy. So if, if you're a person who you don't believe that a person having sex with other people could stop them from fighting against the system of white supremacy. He's saying you shouldn't hold. That's not something you should hold over that person's head. If you're going to choose to be in, in a relationship with that person, remember y'all had y'all 200 questions. If things y'all should be on the same page, you should know what you're getting into. You should know who you're dealing with. So at that point, he's saying stick with your decision and make the best of your decision. And make sure y'all work in the end the system of white supremacy because you had a choice. You had time to, to make a decision whether this is the route you want to go with this person. Remember, you had 200 conversations. During the counter war to end white supremacy, it is best and correct to minimize conflict between non-white males and non-white females by expecting in advance confusion, discord, disappointment, dissatisfaction, and unexpected changes in behaviors in matters of sex, sexual intercourse, and or sexual play. Expect your mate under the system of white supremacy to probably step out on you sexually and have sex with somebody else. Because that's what the system of white supremacy produces. Confusion. White supremacy causes confusion. In sexual matters, it is best and correct to always be prepared to expect the unexpected and never expect sexual matters to be what they should be. Expect them to be what they are, not what they should be. What is the basic counter-racist law of approval and disapproval in matters of sex and race? And Neela Fuller is saying, the law is as follows. As long as white supremacy racism exists, any person who approves of any act of sexual intercourse and or sexual play between a white person and a non-white person should approve of any act of sexual intercourse and or sexual play between any persons. So he's saying 
especially those of us who claim to understand what's going on and claim to understand what racism is system white supremacy so if if you will willingly have sex with a white person under the system of white supremacy then you shouldn't have a problem with anybody having sex with anything else with anybody else because if you will willingly according to Neely Fuller if you will willingly have sex with your enemy how can you look at somebody else look down on somebody else for having sex with the the person of their own race who are, who are you to question that person's integrity and morals and values when you are having literally having sex with white people under the system of white supremacy that's what he's saying what are the six major reasons for not sit, starting or continuing an intimate male or female relationship and or marital arrangement so the answer is number one willful and deliberate sexual intercourse and or sexual play with the white person so he's saying under the compensatory logic under the system of white supremacy if you have sex with a white person that's the terms that's grounds for termination of the relationship two not being willing to tell each other everything including all of each other's thoughts dislikes desires likes dislikes and every detail of everything that each person has ever done three production or the promotion of sexual disease or germ you spread in stds get the hell on for physical or mental abuse you can't if you are if you are abusing your your mate period get the hell on five harmful spending or wasteful or non-constructive use of money time and materials if you if we're going broke because if you get the hell on sixth production of offspring without the approval of all persons involved in the so-called mateship or marital ship arrangement if somebody says they don't want to have a child and that person ends up being the parent a lot of stuff went wrong a lot of misconfusion a lot of lying a lot of backhanded stuff a lot of stuff went wrong but a lot of bad actions took we got to do better sex is doing nothing but making bad relationships worse it's causing more confusion good sex causes more confusion than anything so non-white males do not engage in sexual intercourse and or sexual play for the first time with with a non-white female without mutually agreeing to all of the following to enter to interact with each other as compensatory counter races companions to each other and that all of your sexual activities be conducted in such a manner as to assist in ending racism and replacing it with justice to not engage in sexual intercourse and or sexual play with any white person three to not engage in any act of so-called alternative sexual acts with a white person or a non-white person to not produce any offspring unless there is a mutual agreement to do so and agree that one companion alone is ready willing and able to provide all the needs of the offspring including food clothing shelter and correct teaching of all of the following needs to grow including how to think speak and act to help replace the system of white supremacy with the system of justice yeah look, we just follow number four right there that that'll eliminate a lot of the mistaken pregnancies or the babies who being born into bad situations or people don't really want to be together what the hell you got to change that Number five, to engage in the first act of sexual intercourse with each other only after willfully and deliberately appearing in private, uncovered, or naked and naked for no less than a total of 200 days and nights. We had 200 conversations, real conversation, but ass naked, learning each other. To tell each other about any defects that you have in regards to your mind body including any disability or any disease now you have you have now or have had what's going on with your body i know i got a b12 deficiency and a low white blood cell count other than that i'm in the light swim well so what do you have right asking all types of questions tell to tell each other everything that both of you have ever done in regards to sexual intercourse sexual play and the so-called alternative sexual acts with um with anyone white or non-white and also to tell the names or the titles of only of only those persons involved who you were with so especially if they were white so who you having sex with who you've been having sex with that matters that really does matter when we're talking about being constructive and moving forward it matters it matters your past matters because your what happened in the past does affect you moving forward not to tell anyone about what you do in regards to sexual intercourse and or sexual play with each, with each other without also agreeing 
who will be told when they will when they will be told and what. Number nine is to engage in sexual intercourse and or sexual play with any other non-white person without telling each other. Also, tell each other your reason for doing so and when and where and how, and uh, but not the names or the titles. So basically, going back to what I was saying earlier is expect under the system of white supremacy, expect your mate to probably want to have sex with somebody else. But also number nine is saying, hey, you need to tell your partner, you need to tell your mate, hey, I'm about to go have sex with uh, Rokisha. Rokisha, me and Rokisha about to go have sex. All right. He's saying be upfront and honest about what y'all doing. Don't be behind the back. Don't be sneaking around. But also, don't expect. It's insane to expect the person to be loyal and faithful in a system that doesn't breed loyalty and faithfulness. To not engage in gossip, gossip or contribute to gossip in regards to what is said about any act of sexual intercourse or any sexual play that involves any non-white person with another non-white person. Not to engage in sexual intercourse and or sexual play with anyone in any way which results in unjust harm being done to anyone. To continue to engage in sexual intercourse and or sexual play with each other only as long as sexual intercourse and or sexual play helps to produce greater thought, speech, and or action against racism and white supremacy. To not oppose by word or deed any mutual agreement that is made by others that is the exact same as the mutual agreements collectively. To not blame each other, but to not blame yourself as individuals for any part of the aforementioned agreement not used that resulted in something happened that was not constructive also blame white supremacy and racism. Yeah, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the white supremacy, the racists are to blame for all of our issues, but it's on us to fix our issues. So they are the blame for the issues and it's on us to fix the issues. So we got to be the best we can be to fix our issues. During the existence of racism, if your chosen mate has never willfully or deliberately had sexual intercourse with a white person, do not harmfully complain if that person, uh, if that if that chosen mate willfully or deliberately had sexual intercourse with any non-white person. Oh, let me read that again. I think I read that wrong. During the existence of racism, if your chosen mate has ever willfully or deliberately had sexual intercourse with a white person, do not harmfully complain if that chosen mate willfully or deliberately has sexual intercourse with any non-white person. Basically, going back to what I was saying earlier, Neely Fuller is saying, if your chosen mate or if you are the person who's willfully, who's willfully had sex with a white person, you might, and he believes, you might step out on your mate. That's what Neely Fuller is getting at. If you've had sex with a white person under the system of white supremacy, especially if you know what's going on, you might step out on your mate. All non-white males and all non-white females should minimize conflict by avoiding being each other's in each other's presence, except for acts of sexual intercourse. And when not in each other's presence, seek to help each other by doing different forms of constructive work in support of each other. If 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 we can't get along. If we can't get along outside of sex, we don't need to be around each other. We don't need to be having sex. We've got to be able to be constructive. We have to be able to build. We have to be able to move together and grow together as men and women. And if we're not doing that, we're tripping, all right? Like, there's more to the relationships than sex. You spend more time outside of the bedroom and with your clothes on than you do inside the bedroom with your clothes off. When choosing a sexual mate, what are some of the most important things to remember to do and not to do? One is do keep in mind that your chosen mate, like everyone else, is at all times in some way, great or small, in the process of becoming someone else. There's reason to believe that between birth and death, people change. There's reason to believe that after that, before birth and after death, people change. Do not choose as a mate any person that you believe that you cannot talk to about anything and tell that person the truth about everything that you think. Say and do act at any time, including economics, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. Why are we having sex if we can't be honest and vulnerable with each other? If we can't grow with each other, why are we having sex? Do not choose as a mate any person whom you would no longer want as a mate if that person, while being your mate, chooses to also have sexual intercourse with another non-white person. I'm going to read that one again. 
Do not choose as a mate any person whom you would no longer want to be as a mate if that person, while being your mate, chooses to also have sexual intercourse with another white person. We said, been over that plenty of times, don't have to go over that again. Do not choose as a mate any person whom you believe would provoke you into committing violence because that chosen mate has chosen to engage in sexual intercourse with others after having promised to only have sexual intercourse with you and or for any reason other than direct defense against serious bodily harm that is not just and not correct. If you're going to choose somebody, make sure you get to know them fully. And once you get to know them, believe their behaviors. Believe their behaviors. But do not succumb to violence just because your mate has disappointed you. Do not succumb to violence. We need to be um, constructive at all times. So as a non-white male, whatever you choose to say is a fault of any non-white female and also be willing to say that her fault is your failure. Your failure to do what needs to be done to replace the system of white supremacy with the system of justice. During the existence of racism and according to compensatory counter-racist logic, it is correct to say that the faults and the falters of non uh, the, that excuse me that the faults and the failures of non-white people, particularly non-white males, are the direct or indirect result of their not thinking, speaking, and acting differently to replace the system of white supremacy with the with the system of justice. Completely agree. Completely agree. At the end of the day, I'm use my sports analogy again. At the end of the day, it is the leader's fault. While the team, if the team didn't win, it's the leader's fault. At the end of the day, the leader is going to take the blame. But as a team, as a team and members of a team, you have to understand to fix a situation. Everybody involved in the team has a role to play in the situation. Yes, I take the blame. I have no problem taking the blame. Yes, as a man, if I'm going to call myself a leader, yes, I am going to take the blame. But as a person who's on this team, as a follower, don't you sit there and try to act like you don't have a part to play in fixing this situation. As a, as a, a teammate and a follower, don't you sit there and try to act like you didn't participate in this failure. Don't act, then don't act like if we win, you wouldn't participate in this victory. You would sure want if we fix, if we fix and turn things around, you would want your credit in the victory. So damn it, you got to take your credit in the loss as well. I have no problem taking the brunt of the blame or taking all of the blame. As the leader, I have no problem. But as a teammate, you have to understand what role you have to play in making this better. And if you don't, I don't know what the hell to tell you. Racism is a team sport. Do not regard mutual and voluntary acts of sexual intercourse and or sexual play by your chosen mate with a non-white person as a reason for anger, argument, alienation, envy, jealousy, possessiveness, retaliation, violence, or other forms of conflict, or as a reason for discontinuation of constructive activity that with that person, particularly in regards to speech and or action to end racism. Agree with each other that any act of sexual intercourse or sexual play that helps to promote counter racism and or production of justice is always correct. Once again, expect insanity, expect things to go wrong, expect bad decisions to be made, expect counterproductive behavior. All anger, argument, alienation, envy, jealousy, possessiveness, retaliation, violence, and other forms of conflict between non-white persons in regards to sexual intercourse or sexual play should be non-existent. According to compensatory counter-racist logic, there should be no opposition to any acts of sexual intercourse and or sexual play between persons non-white if the acts help to end racism and, and or if the acts help to replace the system of uh, white supremacy with the system of justice. You might not like the act, but if the act is helping the situation, we might have to get past your feelings. During the existence of white supremacy, deliberately promote, I mean, I mean, 
During the existence of white supremacy or racism, deliberately promote nakedness and or nudity of persons only if such nakedness and or nudity best helps to promote the replacement of the system of white supremacy with the system of justice. Do not speak and or act to punish or ridicule a person for being naked, for public nudity, and for breastfeeding a baby while in the view of others. Speak and act to put an end to hypocrisy and everything pertaining to nakedness, sex, and shame. If you believe that it, it is not a shame for a white person to do at some time, see a non-white person completely naked, then you should be willing at any time to allow any non-white person to see you completely naked. Understanding the system that we're living in, understanding that nakedness and all this nudity and stuff is going to be out there. That's the system. It gets promoted. It gets promoted. But if you're cool with it in one way, don't be cool with it in another. Don't act like you're not cool with it in another way. Don't be hypocritical. So that's his uh, some ideas on nudity, some ideas that they have on whores and prostitutes. During the existence of racism, and some of y'all, hey, get out your feelings on this one. During the existence of racism, white supremacy, do not say that any person is a whore unless you add that the person agree that both of you are whores. We both hoes? We both ho whores, not hoes, not thoughts, but whores. You whore. During the existence of white supremacy and according to the compensatory counter racist logic, all of the non white people in the known universe function as direct or indirect whores for the white supremacists. This whore service is rendered in every area of activity, including economics, education, entertainment, labor law, politics, religion, sex, war, and counter war. When talking about non-white people serving as whores and or prostitutes, always blame racist man and racist woman because they the ones pimping us out. Pimps have whores and the whores have pimps. The system of white supremacy is specifically designed to force non-white people to function as whores and prostitutes. Therefore, the only way to prevent non-white people from functioning as whores and prostitutes or, um, is to replace the system of white supremacy with the system of justice. I almost read something I couldn't really read. You know, YouTube guidelines. So, <clears throat> so now we're talking, now he's hitting on love. What is he talking about love? Let's talk about love. As long as racism, white supremacy is the dominant motivating force in the affairs of the people of the known universe, do not expect to know or understand what love is. Do not expect the word do not expect the word love to have a functional meaning. Do not expect to experience true love. Avoid using the word love to describe any feeling or condition now in existence because love should produce justice and as long as the system of white supremacy still exists, we don't really know what love is. We have an idea of what we think love is based off what was told to us or what was sold to us rather. But we don't really know what love is because there's no justice. Love should be accompanied by justice and correctness and righteousness. The word love has been used indirectly to describe too many different conditions in too many different ways. Love is speech and or action that produces a result. The result is justice. Love and justice are not love and justice are one and the same, but asking for love can be confusing. Instead of asking for love, ask for justice. In a social material system dominated by white supremacy, such acts of sexual intercourse and or sexual play between white people and non-white people produce an idea of love that is totally anti-love. Because if it was anti-love, it would work to break down the system of white supremacy. The expressions of love would result in the elimination of falsehood, injustice, and incorrectness among all the people of the known universe. Politeness, loyalty, dedication, Attraction, companion, and close friendship do not necessarily indicate the existence of love. The incorrect use of the word love by racist man and racist woman has resulted in people mistreating themselves and each other, often in the belief that what they do is an expression of love. Some non-white people are sometimes vaguely aware that the way that the word love is used is confusing to them because love should not hurt. Love should not cause pain. White supremacists, racists, however, regard true love as something that non-white people should only have for white people. White supremacists require that non-white people not love each other, but only tolerate each other, and then only as is necessary to collectively render service to the system of white supremacy. 
and you can see how to, how we treat each other, how we think about each other, how we look at each other, that we don't know how to love each other. But we do have love for the system of white supremacy. We do have love for racist men, racist women. That's what we've been conditioned to do. Love and romance. Love and happiness. Love and happiness. So what about happiness? What is the connection between love, justice, and happiness? That's a good question. What is it? Happiness happens. It happens in moments. These happy moments usually occur at times that are unexpected and for reasons that are not always understood. These happy moments should be accepted as such, understood as such, and remembered as such. By comparison, most of the time a person is more likely to be bored than happy. In addition, happiness may or may not be connected with love and justice according to compensatory logic love and justice love is justice and justice is love yeah because i could be happy being destructive but it's not justice or love romance in practice is fakery it is speech and or action designed to confuse or entertain people through pretending the concept of romance is to have a person say and do whatever would be useful in getting one person to seduce another person through charming words and deceitful action. Romance often requires that a person use lust to seduce another and to do so under the guise of false affection and concern for the other person's needs. Romance can thrive in the absence of justice. Love cannot. Romance cannot be promoted entirely, though, entirely through lust. Romance, excuse me, romance can be promoted entirely through lust. Love can't. Let me read those last two parts again. Romance can thrive in the absence of justice. That's powerful. Romance can thrive in the absence of justice, but love can't. Romance can be promoted entirely through lust. Through lust. Romance can be promoted entirely through lust, but love can't. The concept of romance excuse me, romance is a concept that best helps white people to practice white supremacy. Affection is a concept that best helps non-white males and non-white females to interact with each other in the most constructive manner, honestly, and with genuine quality. I'm going to read that one more time. Romance is a concept that best helps white people to practice white supremacy. Affection is a concept that best helps non-white males and non-white females to interact with each other in the most constructive manner, honestly, with genuine quality. Affection does. Though through the system of white supremacy, non-white people are led into the promotion of romantic speech and action. Or oh, are you wrong? I am not romantic. No, I'm not. I'm logical. Romance leads non-white people into confusion through play acting. This results in conflict between non-white males and non-white females and confusion about sexual matters in general. Romantic speech or action can often conceal harmful intent. Romantic speech or action can often conceal harmful content. Romantic speech or action can often heal harmful intent. There's reason to believe that acts of affection and compassion based on the intention of production justice of producing justice rather is the best way of producing of promoting the, the production of love there's reason to believe that the acts of affection and compassion based on the intent of producing justice is the best way of promoting the production of love all right what is the correct thing for you to do or say in order to get people to love you or like you Never think about getting any person to love you or like you. Instead, spend your time and energy, one, producing, building, repairing, improving, and or cleaning those things that have constructive value and using those things for constructive purposes only. Two, studying, writing, asking questions, and or exchanging views with others about as all aspects of how to eliminate racism and or how to produce justice in all areas of activity including economics, education, entertainment, labor law, politics, religion, sex, war, and counter-war. Eating and sleeping correctly and only as necessary. Engaging in sexual intercourse no more than two times every seven days. All right? 
If you are a female, do not agree to participate in a romantic date unless you intend to, unless you intend to, and unless you are willing to engage in trivial and or silly conversation that may or may not include eating, drinking, dancing, kissing, cuddling, or nakedness. Or two, engaging in sexual intercourse for the purpose of comfort, fun, and or thrills, only with this little or no concern for the very, for the future serious, for a future serious and constructive relationship. All the dating and the romantic stuff, basically Neil Fuller is saying, get away from the dating and the romantic stuff. Get to more constructive, real relationship. Y'all get down, have real conversation, take your clothes off, get butt naked, and, and ask real questions. Get to really know each other. Learn each other. Stop with the bullshit. Yes, we know we want to have sex. I be horny as hell, too. I get it. But it's not working what we're doing. It's not working. Change the way we have sex. He's recommended to not have sex with white people. But when having sex with non-white people, have sex in the most constructive manner that you can have. Also, be realistic. Expect insane people to act insane and have insane uh, actions. So expect your mate to probably step out on you. Expect your mate to probably have sex with somebody else. We're insane. We're going to do insane things. But he's saying it's insane to expect your mate to not be insane. It's, it's insane to expect your mate to be functional under a system that doesn't allow a male to become a fully functional man. That's crazy. That's what he's saying. That's crazy to expect a, a person who cannot be a fully functional man to act like a fully functional man. But he's also saying, also saying, you need to get to know who you're getting into. Who you're getting into it with. Get to know these people before you have relationships, before you have relations. Get to know these people. And if you don't get to know these people, you're only setting yourself up for fit. So, like I said, I read from page 308 to 335. So, from here, we're going to be finishing up this chapter. So, from 335 to 357, what we're going to do for the next video to end this section and go to our last section, area nine, which is war and counter war. So, like I said, we're going to read from 336 to to. 357 that'll end sex for the next upcoming video but for this video i read from 308 to 330 to 335 and the top of 336 so make sure you get that nearly full of junior compensatory code giving us suggestions that we can use to better improve our life and be more constructive i don't agree with everything that he suggests and you don't have to agree with everything that he suggests you don't have to agree with everything that i suggest but we do need to come to some commonalities so we can um, have a consensus code for ourselves to help produce justice and end the system of white supremacy. So that's how we're doing it. Happy Monday. Let's start this Monday off right. You already know what tomorrow is, 4th of July. It's not freedom for us. So remember Frederick Douglass' speech to what a slave is the 4th of July. That's not something we need to celebrate. But what we do need to be doing on the 4th of July is making sure we're building uh constructive relationships and being as constructive as possible as we can be on the holiday of when america freed itself from british colony and continued slavery so with that being said i'm joseph ward love you all happy monday again make sure y'all catch the next video